show in the known universe yes talk shows have more than one person these are our mini episodes new sets coming great stuff let's hit the headlines microsoft just released a video this week that could change the way hand-drawn animation is made the team worked with the university of hong kong and the university of tokyo to create what they're calling autocomplete hand-drawn animations well, the animation industry has been using semi-automated technology for a while now with software like meander and draco doing some heavy lifting during production for animators but this new technology is pretty remarkable in that a single stroke of an artist's pen allows the software to decide if you're drawing the same figure in a new frame so then the software can populate that frame with the figure and the artist can use it as a guide but also make changes to the animation's wireframes as an artist sketches without anchor points or keyframe markers or anything else that's really in depth. Patterns can be filled in and colors can be applied across frames as well. This kind of technology could be huge for indie animators or anyone looking to speed up their production schedule if it ever makes it to a commercial product. Still, it's some really impressive stuff and worth your time checking out. Okay, so going from animations on digital to actual real life animated dolls. Japan's Super Dolphy dolls are getting some really amazing robotic makeovers from a YouTuber named Rosen Zebit. He's been customizing these dolls for years now, but this is the first I've seen them, and they are so cool that I had to share. Dolphies are fully customizable dolls, and Rosen Zebit took that customization to the next by swapping out their doll bodies with robotic skeletons, as one does. His most recent video uploaded a few weeks ago featured a katana sword wielding dolphy and other designs include a fan dancing dolphy, a violin playing dolphy, and even a Hatsune Miku dolphy if you're into virtual Japanese pop stars. Honestly, there's no larger life-changing application happening here, but seriously, wouldn't Amazon sell a lot more Alexas if they were little men and women dolphies? I think so. You're welcome, Amazon. It's a great idea. All right, our last story of the day is about a German designer who created a way for people to upcycle their plastic bags into something a little more special. This is called street plastic, created by German designer Stephanie Rittler. The process is simple. Drop in your old plastic bag in the machine, hand turn the crank on the side of the device, and voila, a more interesting and fun plastic bag pops out. Of course, there are some inherent scaling solutions at play here. You can't really make a new bag without two bags to start with, and heating some cheaper plastic bags could in fact release harmful vapor into the environment, which is why street plastic isn't meant for mass adoption. It's just an artistic concept device that suggests a big idea. Maybe if we make worthless objects a little more valuable in the eyes of the beholder, people will think twice about discarding them so easily into landfills and trash bins. And getting people to think about their impact on the environment even a little more than usual is always a good thing. That's it for our headlines. Let's check out what's new this week. This week, the big release is Guitar Hero Live for Xbox One, Xbox 360, PS4, PS3, and Wii U. The big deal here is there is a brand new guitar that everyone is dying to get their hands on. And of course, Guitar Hero TV, which is probably going to make your party the best party. So FYI. Also out this week, The Legend of Zelda Triforce Heroes for 3DS. You're going to be able to team up with your friends locally or online to uh, be Link and wear some really cute costumes and do amazing things. I don't know. It just looks awesome. It's a Legend of Zelda game. I'm going to buy it. There you go, Nintendo. Be happy now. Over in the land of movies, Steve Jobs is finally getting a wide release this weekend, so if you haven't been able to catch it at your local Cineplex, you can probably see it now. And of course, Paranormal Activity The Ghost Dimension is going to be in theaters, giving you something to watch while Halloween quickly approaches. That's it for your new releases. Let's look at your pretty, pretty pictures with our photographer of the day. Our photographer of the day today is Paul, who sent us this picture he took with his Galaxy Note 4. He wrote to us and said, Here is a picture I took with my Galaxy Note 4. This is a little park just off the road in Ackworth, Georgia, that my wife and I go to once in a while on the weekends. You have my permission to use it, of course. Love the show. Looking forward to the new set and co-hosts. Keep up the great work. No, you keep up the great work, Paul. That was an awesome picture. I love it. Makes me want to just lay down, take a nap, listen to some birds chirping outside, hang out in a garden. I don't know. I just... It's really, 
it's really relaxing for me to look at that picture. If you guys want to submit your photography to be considered for our Photographer of the Day segment, you can email us tomorrow at cnet.com. Make sure you give us your name, the phone you took your picture with, the picture itself, and a little story to go with it. And of course, lastly, give us permission to use it on the show. If you want to find us online, we're tomorrowdaily.com. If you want to share the show with a friend, which I always appreciate. And of course, you can find Tomorrow Daily on pretty much every major social media site at Tomorrow Daily. And I'm at Ashley Sketh on Twitter. And producer Logan, back there behind the camera, is at Logan Moy. Well, that's it for the show today, guys. We'll be back tomorrow with a brand new docket of science fact meeting science fiction. But until then, be good humans. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>